Welcome to the Elevate Media Podcast with your host, Chris Anderson. In this show, Chris and his guests will share their knowledge and experience on how to go from zero to successful entrepreneur. They have built their businesses from scratch and are now ready to give back to those who are just starting. Let's get ready to learn, grow, and elevate our businesses. And now your host, Chris Anderson. Welcome back to another recording of the Elevate Media Podcast. I am Chris Anderson, your host. And today we're going to get into the topic of abundance. And I'm really excited for today's guest who's going to help us walk through some pillars. Some uh, There's seven pillars that she has within imbu- abundance. And so I'm just excited to have that conversation and see where it leads us. And, and hopefully you can take something away from it today. But we have Rebecca Whitman on today. Rebecca, welcome to the Elevate Media Podcast. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. Excited to have you on as a guest and just learn from from you and be able to share with the audience a little bit more about abundance. So, you know, kind of to dive right into it, obviously people can search you, figure out more about you. And at the end, we'll let you share where people can connect with you directly at, but um, kind of get in the meat and potatoes of things, you know, abundance. We hear about abundance, you know, abundance lifestyle, abundance mindset. What got you so interested in becoming an expert in this abundance topic? That is such a great question. I, uh, gosh, I, I thought money meant abundance. <laughs> so when I was in my 20s, I was in a direct sales company where they would show like, you know, pictures of Lamborghinis and mansions and beach houses and private jets. And I thought that was abundance. And I made that my mission in my 20s to get that kind of abundance. And I absolutely burned out. Mm -hmm. I was overweight, depressed, had a series of really toxic relationships that left me heartbroken. And I decided to start on a spiritual path and study with great spiritual teachers like Michael Beckwith, Esther Hicks, Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay, and really understand about the law of attraction. And I started applying it to my life. And before I knew it, I was making more part-time than I ever made full-time. And I realized that abundance wasn't necessarily just how much money you made, but all aspects of life. And the seven pillars of abundance are spirituality, fitness, emotions, romance, mental, social, and financial. And when you have all seven areas of life in alignment, you can be, do, or have anything you want. So life still happens. I ended up getting a divorce and losing my dad uh, within three days of each other. Hmm. And a few months later, I was sitting across the desk from my financial planner, and he asked me, how did you do it? I'm looking at your portfolio, and you're having your best fiscal year ever. And your energy is really good, but you've had these tragic losses. And I explained to him that I look at life in these seven areas. And even though my romance was falling apart, and even though I felt the emotion of losing my dad, I still had my friends and my fitness and my different income streams. And he said, I think you should teach people how to do that. So I wrote a book. It's called How to Make a Six-Figure Income Working Part-Time. And in the book, I outline in depth all seven areas of abundance and how you can get them in alignment. And now I coach women on how to go from burned out and overwhelmed to balanced, beautiful, and abundant. That's awesome. So why do you think people, or where do you think people go wrong to not be living an abundant life? Is it just something we're kind of conditioned into not to to know how to do, or where do you think we kind of miss the mark? I think it's in our thinking. Mm-hmm. We have a reptilian brain called the limbic system, and it is conditioned to be in fight flight. It is conditioned to be in scarcity because okay. when we were cavemen and cave women, we didn't know when there was a saber tooth tiger or a woolly mammoth coming right around the corner. So we had to always be like, Oh my God, oh my God, what's going to happen? But now we have everything, you know, we can hit a button and have anything at our doorstep through Amazon. We're working from our home in our pajamas. Like there's no need to have this fight or flight, but we still have that. 
So it's about being aware of when we are in scarcity versus abundance thinking. Scarcity thinking is there's not enough good. There's not enough money. There's not enough energy. There's not enough love. There's not enough approval. Whatever it is that you want, there's not enough versus I have plenty of energy. I have plenty of love. There's plenty of romantic options out there if you're single and uh, there's no shortage. So it's just really being very aware of your self-talk and how you talk to yourself is going to create your reality. And how's that, how does that do that? Because, you know, we could say, you know, bank account's zero and we can tell ourselves, oh, it, there's there's plenty of money out there. You know, they're, they're continued. They just print money out there. There's clients out there. So how does that actually, you know, start changing? Is it just, you know, our, instead of a negative energy, we start just have positive, like, hey, good's coming. Like it is coming. Yeah. Kind of I mean, you can't just do fake affirmations and get results. Like, right. you can't be like, there's plenty of money, but I freaking hate my job. I hate my boss. I hate my spouse. There's like $5 in my bank account. Uh, these affirmations yeah. never work. Like, huh. there's a lot more inner work that okay. has to be done. And that's why people do hire a coach like me to help them get down to their limiting beliefs and mm. change them. So I would say we all have an old story about why we don't have what we want, whether it's love or money or health, whatever it is. And we, in coaching with someone, I help them figure out what that limiting belief is, why they got it. And then we work on having a new belief, which is supported through affirmations. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it does take time. Yeah. But I will tell you this, the law of attraction does not give a shit how much money you have in your bank account. Right. I have friends who had $7 in their bank account and they manifested their multi-million dollar acting job. I have friends that were acting teachers and they manifested like marrying like a multi-gazillionaire. So it really, when you think about it, how much you have in your bank account is the past. Mm. We manifest from the present. So anything could change in any moment. Every 10 seconds is a new reality. So I would say don't focus on how much you have in your bank account. Focus on what you want. Mm -hmm. So when we, if we can do that, if we can understand there's an underlying limiting belief and we mm -hmm. can start, we found that and we start mm -hmm. bringing in these affirmations that are true and we and we live in the now what does that look like what does that change look like in people's lives it is a relief honestly because i was someone that was in a lot of scarcity thinking and i was very vigilant very competitive i could be even like you know freaking aggressive you know when it came to fighting over like a guy or what I wanted like in my job and it's just like oh there's plenty to go around there's plenty of sand at the beach you don't have to fight over a patch of sand you don't have to fight if you go swimming in the ocean over a wave like it's just a it's a realization that made me feel so much more relaxed and at ease and I could actually become playful and joyous mm. knowing that there was plenty of good to go around. Yeah. And and if someone's at a stage where they don't know what that limiting belief is, besides obviously getting a coach in this area, are there things they can do personally to try to start figuring that out, where that limiting belief truly is? Yeah. I mean, I have a free quiz on my website, RebeccaElizabethWhitman.com where you can see which of the seven areas is out of alignment. Mm -hmm. And then you can ask yourself, what is my limiting belief in that area? Maybe you're out of alignment with your health and fitness. Ask yourself, what is my limiting belief? Is it no matter how hard I work out, I'm still going to have that extra 10 pounds. So why even try? Mm -hmm. You know, there, we all have a limiting belief. Even if you have like excellence in one of these areas, there's still limiting belief because there's always more to release and more positivity to have. Like, like for me, I have right now, I'm married to my soulmate, which is amazing because I had a really rough time in my love life. I had a lot of breakups and divorces and disappointments. 
but maybe I have a limiting belief. I'm asking myself now, what is it in the moment? You know, maybe, maybe that I am um, not present enough. I'm not connected enough. I'm not doing enough, you know, and how could I change that? How could I flip that into an affirmation? It would be, you know, I love being present and connected to my soulmate. Mm -hmm. So there's always ways to level up in these seven areas of life. And for me, I'm, I'm a addic addicted to personal growth and development. So I, I'll be leveling up in these areas all my life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we ever get to the stopping point. Right. I think yeah. we can always grow and always learn and always improve. You know, I just actually was commenting on a guy's post today. Yes. And, you know, as far as an interviewer, are you brand new? Are you kind of into it? Or are you experienced? Or if not, or other, tell me why. I said, I picked other. I said, I'm experienced, but there's still so much room for growth. There's still so much areas that I could improve in even now, even still after, you know, 300 something episodes of interviews. And uh, it's the same thing I think in our, in our abundance journey, in our, in our mindset, there's always room for that improvement and growth. Absolutely. And, uh, Congratulations on over 300 interviews. I'm I'm sure you're a much different interviewer now than you, when you first started. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, the first ones are still up, which is crazy, uh, looking back how bad they were. So, um, but yeah, I think even then, like, it's just a mindset. Like, I think even with that, you know, limiting, limiting beliefs of as an interviewer, like, no one's going to listen to me. Like, I'm not worth, like, the time of someone tuning in, you know, at the beginning, having to work through that. And like, now it's just, I'm excited to put something out that people can learn from and, and grow and, and changing the mindset around it. Absolutely. And, uh, I, I agree. I know that feeling cause I put out a lot of content. It's like, yeah. Oh, nobody's watching. Nobody cares. I'm like, you know, putting out content to like, you know, crickets. But the great <laughs> thing about putting out content is it lives forever. Yep. So even if nobody watches it the first time you release the podcast or the first time you're on a live, it'll, it'll live forever. Yeah. And it's, it's just a process too. And like, all, you know, the whole journey since I started 2019, the podcast, like those moments where someone would reach out and say, man, what you're doing is awesome. Like I took so much away or I really enjoy this. It's like, okay, even if it's just one person's helping, like even if one person is taking something and being able to improve. Like, all right, this is worth it. And, you know, you just, it just changes how you look at it. So, you know, with abundance, do you notice a, a pattern with the seven pillars? Like, are there certain patterns that usually are, are the, in, or are one of the pillars more, how I want to say it, are one of the pillars usually the ones people struggle with limiting beliefs more than others, like money or relationships more than some of the other ones, or are they kind of even? I think mo love and money are the two hot points. Yeah. What do yeah. you think that is? I think because they're necessary for our survival, you know, money is literally, if you don't have money, you can't provide food and shelter for yourself. Yeah. And love is such a basic need. You know, when we're babies, we need to feel that love and connection to a mother or we perish as a baby, you know. So I think they're both very primal and they're very connected. You know, when you're having a uh, good experience making money, then it's usually easier to be a loving, kind person and, you know, vice versa. If you're like it, having a really terrible relationship that's toxic and abusive, it yeah. makes it really hard to make a lot of money. So the two are very intertwined. That's a great point and a great way to look at it. You know, I never thought about being intertwined, but it makes a lot of sense. Uh, so for those listening, they're they're trying to start something. You know, they're trying to start a side hustle. They're trying to start a business, get it to the next level. And they've been working on themselves. Maybe they found, again, their limiting belief. They kind of know what it is. And maybe they are struggling with money. I guess since we're in the kind of the business realm. Or maybe they're not at the level they want to get to yet. What would be some good affirmations that they could put in place uh, to help them with that? Uh, again, with them maybe having the understanding of what their limiting beliefs are. 
I have a lot <laughs> because <laughs> being an entrepreneur myself, you know, yeah. there's definitely ups and downs. Mm -hmm. um, one is I am enough. I have enough. I am willing to set myself free because as long as we have our next breath, which is what we need to be alive, we really have enough. We think we need all this outside stuff and, you know, the accolades and the house and the car and all this stuff. But really, if we have our next breath, we're doing pretty good because a lot of people didn't wake up today. Yeah. So happiness is not getting what you want, but wanting what you have mm -hmm. and being grateful. The fastest way to go from a scarcity to an abundance mindset is through gratitude. Mm. That's so good. Yeah. I think that's huge. Is Can you repeat that whole line again? <laughs> that was so good. Uh, the affirmation? The The about having or being joyful about what you have. Oh, yeah. Happiness is not getting what you want. It's wanting what you have mm. and being grateful for it. That's so good. So I really love that affirmation. Another one is things are always working out for me mm. uh, because if you really believe and have faith that things are always working out for you, there are no such things as setbacks. They are stepping stones to your success. And I like to tell my students, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Because there is no failure. You either win or you learn. So if you have the freedom to be able to do it messy, knowing that you'll either get what you want or you learn, that is a really great thing for entrepreneurs. Yeah. Uh, another great thing is I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of us have compare and despairism. Oof, yeah. We want to be like the person on our social media or we want to even be a different version of us. Like, yep. oh, when I was this age, I thought I would be so much further ahead. <laughs> so you, you don't want to compare yourself to anyone, including yourself and your own judgments, because you're exactly where you're supposed to be on your journey. Yeah. All roads led you here. All roads led you to listening to this podcast in this moment with me and Chris. <laughs> and you are exactly where you're supposed to be. That's another affirmation that really helps me. Uh, that one right there. That one, I'm going to use that one. That's a good one because, you know, I think I'm my hardest critic, right? And I'm like, man, I should be, you know, up there. I should be the next step. And we're right where we're supposed to be. I, I like that one a lot. That's a good one, a good reminder for myself. So, you know, Rebecca, these have been, this has been great. I mean, time has flown. <laughs> um, I, it's crazy. Uh, the conversation has been awesome. And I think we can't, hit on it enough. Like this could be hours and hours and hours long because there is so much to dive into and to lead people in. But I think what you've shared today about one, you've got to figure out what your limiting beliefs are. Know yourself, figure that out. What's kind of in the way and whether it be going to Rebecca's site, taking that quiz or, or just getting a coach through Rebecca or someone else, uh, just figuring that out and then putting in place these, these positive affirmations and keeping in the gratitude state, keeping in the now, um, uh, it's phenomenal. So I appreciate you so much being on and sharing all this today. Where can people connect with you? I know you got some stuff coming up. Love for you yeah. to share that. So yeah, share that with everyone listening. Well, I have a really exciting workshop coming up on January 7th, and it's a Zoom workshop. You can attend it from anywhere in the world. It's free. It is called the New Year, New You Workshop. And we're going to do exactly what Chris and I discussed. We're going to look at all seven pillars of abundance. We're going to find the limiting belief. We're going to change that limiting belief into an affirmation. And you're going to get walk away with three affirmations for each of the seven pillars. So you'll have 21 affirmations for the new year, which will be your roadmap for the new year. And a dream without a goal, I mean, a goal without a plan is just a dream. So we want to give you a roadmap with these 21 affirmations. It is going to be amazing. I've had so many people have breakthroughs during this class. I had someone get a text and this class is almost always on a Sunday. Uh, this is my fourth time having it. She got her dream job while in the class on a Sunday. Uh, people have left toxic relationships. People have uh, used these affirmations to release weight. They've used these affirmations to declutter their homes. 
it is a life changing workshop. So it is going to be in my link tree that Chris is going to share with you guys and you guys can grab your seat in the new year, new you workshop, January 7th. I can't wait to meet you guys. And then after that, I have a seven week course called Elegant Warrior Training, where each week for seven weeks, we are going to do a deep dive into all these seven areas. And I'm going to give you tips, tools, and strategies and assignments to get all these areas to a level 10. So you can start your new year with speed and momentum and keep it going throughout the year. So these are a couple of the offerings that I have coming up. And you can also keep in touch with me on Instagram at Rebecca E. Whitman. And my website is Rebecca Elizabeth with a Z Whitman.com. And it was great being here today, Chris. Yeah, thanks so much. And yeah, the link, uh, link tree is in the show notes below. If you're listening to this, if it's past the date, um, still get connected with Rebecca through the link tree. I'm sure there's links there. Um, but again, yeah, Rebecca, thanks so much for being on the show today. Yes. Thank you so much for having, having me. And if it's past the date of the event, I'm always doing fun stuff on my link tree. I'm doing retreats. I'm doing summits. I'm doing all kinds of cool things. So if you just check the link tree, you can see all my current offerings. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Make sure you guys get connected with her. Continue to elevate what you're doing out there. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Elevate Media Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. See you in the next episode.